Is it a small thing for you to hear, man? But will you hear, my God, also? Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The main thing we're saying is according to Christians to the Quran. Can we worship? Without partners, can we say yeah. that when God Almighty was placed in the heavens and the earth, yeah. He did not need the Prophet Muhammad, He did not need Moses, yeah. He did not need Jesus, He did not need Abraham. Can we accept that? Yeah. That's what we're saying. Look at here and tell this young man. No, no, let him make up verses. He's making up stuff. Yeah, but I'm not naive either. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying you're naive, but you gotta call him out because he keeps rambling on. Make up the stuff, and then he thinks he has done something. He's far more intelligent than you can ever be. He, no, you, he should you, help you. No. Loving, he was the commander. I'm not interrupting you. you. Men, women, children, and babies. That's my argument. That's right. So and I, I gave you the answer very clearly. And so, with uh, I don't know much about the Islamic belief, right? But I would understand that they would also refer to the Old Testament as being reflective of Allah. Right? Yeah, we believe that in Jesus and the Torah that was given to Moses and yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And that would be reflective of Allah. The, the yes, first, not the right. Bible that you have to really good, good, good. Right. So, let's say Samuel, would that be reflective of Allah speaking? Yeah, we, we, would, we would say that no, because the Quran, there is no way it tells us that when you go to warfare to attack innocent men, women, children, babies, or donkeys. You've been doing it. But so, you've been in the Torah. So, you said that again, sorry. So, so we ask, because we look at the Quran, yeah. knowing the Quran it has similar language, that it prescriptively tells you to go in war and kill innocent okay. people. So, but the Quran so verifies. We to God. So, no. it's an interpretive issue. We say we mm -hmm. want to associate that to God. We'll say that's not so, the So, would you guys interpret the Old Testament in Hebrew, or would you interpret it in Arabic? Arabic? So to us, we would say anything that is in line with the Quran, we would accept it as the Torah. Anything that is not, we would But the Quran so says that the Torah yeah, is valid. He's a grown man, he can talk for himself. It's okay, I'm just yeah. helping yeah, yeah, him out, it's alright. Go ahead. Everyone else, yeah, yeah. very charitable. Go help yourself out first. Yeah. Cheers, cheers. You want your sins to kill babies? Right, and so... I said justice. So, so you need Muhammad. Yeah. The Torah, but yes. for the Hebrews. Yeah. 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 I don't believe in the Quran. In the Arabic. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah. But what we say is, the Jews have it in Hebrew. Yeah. What they translate it as, we will look. For example, yeah. the Jews and the Muslims both have something in common. Yeah. The Jews deny that God is a man, the Muslims deny that God is a man. Yeah, yeah. The Jews deny that God, the Father, Son, or daughter, the same with the Muslims. Christians don't say that Christ, God is a man. They they wouldn't they, they wouldn't they wouldn't argue that. No, they would you would you what's your name Alec? My name is Alex. Alex, my name is Alex. Nice nice yeah, okay. Okay. So um, would you claim let me put like this? Do you believe that Jesus is a man? Uh, I'd say he took on human nature and so he in some sense fully was fully human in his taking on of human nature. That's okay. what they So he was human? He would say he's fully human and he is fully divine. Okay. Now hear me, Alex. Yeah? From a Muslim perspective, yeah. where we're coming from is the following. Yeah. We believe that true devotion and worship should be to God alone. Yeah. We believe we sing out what Muslims come to have come to do is the following. Yeah. Allah tells us in the Quran, tell the people of the Come to common terms between us and you yeah. that we worship God alone. Yeah. That is our only thing that we come here, have debates, discussions, dialogues, mm. and preach. Yeah? yeah. The main thing Muslims are calling the Christians to is the following: yeah. Can we worship God Almighty alone without partners? Can we say yeah. that when God Almighty was created in the heavens and the earth, yeah. He did not need the Prophet Muhammad, He did not need Moses, yeah. He did not need Jesus, He did not need Abraham? Can we accept that? That's what we're saying. Number two, can we say that when we are going to worship God, yeah. we don't go through Muhammad and say, Oh Muhammad, can you please go to God, or Oh Jesus, or Moses? Right. We are mediators, in sync. We don't need mediators. Mm. Why? Because Islam, we are yeah, told to follow it. The Prophet yeah, Muhammad told yeah. us, if the son of Adam... Yeah. <laughs> He's not telling you that at the last day, yeah, last day Muhammad is going to be intercessing for Muslims. Changed, yeah. Yeah. No, why don't you tell him the truth, man? Look, he's respectful. No, no, just tell him the truth. He's lying. Okay, listen, listen. To him, but he, he's not telling you the truth, that's what it is. Go ahead. What's the truth? Can you be quiet? He's a grown man. He looks like he does boxing, mate. Eh? I would take a step, step, step back. Yeah, you do you do in sports? Yeah, yeah, a bit. What do you do? I do a bit of break dancing here and there. Oh, come yeah. on. It's in the Olympics. You need to show us some of that today. <laughs> no, no, nah, please, no, come no. on. One, one move. No, no, I'm here, I'm here to dialogue. Okay, no, no, no. Thank you. 
I appreciate it. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. The thing is that we just want to have a civilized time. Absolutely. Okay. So the thing is the following. We're saying that when we're worshipping God alone, yeah. God deserves all glory, mm -hmm. all praise. Mm -hmm. Gratitude belongs to Him. Yes. So I'm not telling you that worship me alone. Yeah. And the problem, <laughs> the question fell into is the following. Yeah. They feel like we cannot be in the presence of God. Why? Because we are not worthy. Islam has come to say, no matter how sinful you are, yep. no matter how bad you think you are, yep. you have a place in the presence of God. If you have sinned, yep. repent. And, and the third thing that I'll just end on, I don't give a lecture, yeah, yeah, no. is that all of God's attributes that are given to him yeah. belong to him. Yeah. So if God is the all-knowing, I can't be the all-knowing. Yeah. So if God is all-powerful, I can't be the all-powerful. Yeah. Now, do you see now, Alex, yeah. how that makes a problem when you see Jesus is fully God and fully man? Yeah. Because what you're doing now is, do you accept that God can lie? I do not believe God can lie. Good. And that's correct. I, I'm in sync with that. God cannot lie because it goes against his actions. Yeah. Now, when you see God became a man or manifestation right. of Jesus, yeah. you are going against a couple of attributes. Yeah. Number yeah. one, he becomes weak. Yeah. Number two, he becomes ignorant. Yeah. Number three, he becomes dependent. Right. The Dawah okay, script so goes again. If you if you, if you you look at the ecumen ecumenical councils, right, in Christianity, and if you go to the Council of Chalcedon, right, and the argument between Cyril of Alexandria and the Nestorians, there is this dispute about this very problem. Wow. Right? And the dispute is over the term Mary being titled Mary, Mother of God. Right? Because that term, the Nestorians argue, would confuse the two natures. Right? Because how can you say that God could be birthed? Right? And how could you also say that a God could suffer? And so I'm not going to be a representative and explain the whole dispute, but I can incline you towards looking at the philosophical theology that was argued, right? That argued how it can be that God could be both fully man, fully adopting human nature, and fully God, right, adopting divine nature, without them being mixed and confused. So that's the, in the Chalcedonian definition. That's a powerful God. Only a powerful God can do that. If this argument was being made, because look, when Islam came down, yep. it was clear to every Muslim who Allah is. Yeah, yeah. He's one. There's nothing like him. Yep. He does not beget, nor is he begotten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it's very clear to us from Allah. He's one. He's one. And he's also, worship. he says we, and, and he's uh, a hut. A hut. That means one hut. He's lying. Yeah. Who is who is Allah? Because. From my understanding, when Christians articulate, you know, God the Father, we understand him as completely transcendent, right? As completely other, right? In his kind of ap apophatic kind of distance. And so we can't say that he is a thing because he's beyond creation, right? Because he created it, right? And so, and so, and so for my understanding, I, I just want to ask, with your understanding of Allah, is he other than creation? He is okay. So what we say with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he is not the creation. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, he's so what we say is of course he is a, look, this is why we use argument from necessary being. Okay. We say that we require a necessary being yeah. because you cannot have an infinite vigorous of contingent things. Jesus was contingent and dependent on food, water, and there's things he didn't know. If you look into the Bible, he did not know when he went to the fig tree that was the season for the fig. When they asked him about when was the, when is the hour, he said, I do not know neither the angels or the father, my father in heaven. You see that he keeps giving credit to where it belongs, which is God Almighty. So with us it's very simple the following. That we're saying to the Christians and yourself, we don't need to get to philosophical arguments. If we put all religions aside, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, all of it, and me and you walk upon an island, yeah. on what basis would you come to me and say, Ali, I think God is three in one? You would never say that. There was even a study done in Oxford University by Justin Barrett. He found that the young kids, yeah. if they are not influenced by any religion, they grow up to believe in a higher single power. Right. This is the reason why as Muslims we say every person is born a Muslim. Why? Because you don't need, I don't need to come and tell you, like I was speaking to another Christian girl called Cindy. Yeah. Single questions I asked her. Yeah. If you were to choose between three or one, if someone else said God is one, why would I have to break them? So the point is very simple. Innately you know God has to be one. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so I think, so Christians would probably argue that God is... Forget Christians, I want to speak to Alex. Okay, okay, okay. I want to speak to Alex. But I, I'm not going to say that I'm representing...
representative of the Christian tradition. I'm not believe I'm able to do the Muslim Right, and, yeah, so I'm fallible and I make mistakes. Me too, and right, I'm okay. simple as well. Okay, so from my understanding of the Christian tradition, they would argue that God is both three right, distinct persons, right, but also underlying the divine nature, they're one, right? They all share in the one divine nature, right? And so they're not distinct from that, right? And so that's important because you can say, I believe Jesus is God, or I believe you know, the Father is God, I believe the Holy Spirit is God, right? And you're both pointing to the divine nature, right? That they share it. And so you're speaking of one, you know, one, one, one nature, let's say. And so, I guess my kind of question that I was trying to steer to is if Allah is not a created thing, then who is he? How can we come to know? And I think like it's important because in the Torah, Moses is a mediator, right? He's a mediator of the law of God. Message. Right. And well, yeah. He's not divine. He came with. He went forty days. Yeah. He came with a message. Yeah, and he's he's not divine, but he he mediated. That's right. He does mediate. Yeah, right, all the prophets did. And, right, and, and so, like, as some things that I've read is my question. Sometimes is, he says there's no mediator, and now he says there's no mediator. How did Moses have that relationship with Allah? Okay. Right. Uh, if Allah's not a creative thing, right? Okay, and how could he know? Like, right. you see, like, how okay, could that communication? Okay, happen? good. Firstly, have you read the Quran before? I have not read the Quran. Give me a gift. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it. Second thing is the following: yeah. every prophet, Jesus, yeah. I believe, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. Nobody goes to God but through him yeah. when he came. Yeah. Moses was the truth, the way and the life. Nobody could go to God. He never claimed that. Why are you lying? Why when did he claim that? Did he claim that? Are you, have you got are you just gonna here? make up your own Bible verses here? Uh, you want me to just stand here and <laughs> tell this young man? No, no, let him make up verses. He's making up stuff. Yeah, but I'm not naive either. And so, I, 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 and I'm not saying you're naive, but you gotta call him out because he keeps rambling on. Make up he's, stuff, he's and then he thinks he's done something. He's far more intelligent than you can ever be. No, you, he should you, help you. No, 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 no. Come on, let's now, let's continue. We believe. I didn't quote scripture. Yeah. That Moses is the way and the truth and the life, and nobody goes to him except to the Father except to him, the God Almighty. And the same with Prophet Muhammad. You had the Old Testament, yeah, you had the New Testament, the Quran is the final testament. Allah to us is the following. He sent prophets. You know why? Because Allah tells us in the Quran. Some of the idol worshippers will come and say, Why did you not send angels? Well, angels are not going to relate to me. How am I going to relate to an angel? So, God Almighty sent the prophets because I can relate to the prophets. That's why they came from the tongue of their own people. Yeah, that, I think that's the question I had though, is that <coughs> even when looking at the prophets, yeah. how did the prophets have this relationship with this completely transcendent being, right? How, what is the connection? Good, so we see revelation. So Angel Gabriel is the one that came to Moses, Jesus, Abraham, and is that the prophets. Is a mediator figure? Not mediator, in what way? We don't have an issue with a mediator that's conveying the message. We're saying we do not make that mediator divine. That's why when you talked okay. about yeah. that, this is my point here. Yeah. When they would discussion, who is Jesus? Is he God? Is he not God? His mother? Yeah. <clears throat> the point shows what? That they were not clear of who he was. Number one. Number two, if you look at the old church fathers, the early church fathers, none of them believed in the Holy Spirit in the triune God head. It wasn't there. So the point is That's what? not true. The, check it. So the point is this, Alex. In a nutshell, Islam is saying the following. To worship God alone, God's devotion and gratitude belongs to him. We're saying, we're saying, okay, what we're saying is that Jesus never ever claimed to be divine. He never ever asked you to worship him. Every time, when he went to the Mount of Gethsemane, he fell on his face and prayed. Yes? So I'm saying, when you look at Jesus' life, even if you take the Bible, even though I don't This is the textbook yeah? dawah he's giving you, bro. Please, please. Yeah, that's textbook dawah, man. This is why Allah says in the Quran, the Christians are not the same. Look at him and look at him. A different amount. I'm, sorry, I'm not trying to praise you, I'm being honest with you. I'm trying to get you no, but Allah also is a deceiver, which you are a deceiver. You're trying to deceive him. That's all. Start one more thing, because yeah. I'm curious, and I don't want to waste your time either. I'm here. Okay. Okay. A, a sincere Christian like you, yeah. but I'll be here to meet my listening yeah, to you. I appreciate it. With him, I want to stay here ten seconds. Because you can't. So, so yeah, because you're breathless. Yeah, you can't. So the, the the angel Gabriel is not a mediator figure, right? No. Because and so you're associating. He's a mediator, but not divine. Right, he's not divine. Okay. I okay. I, let's say I want to believe that. He is a mediator figure, but he's not the Fine. The question still stands though of how is it that he has a relationship between, let's say, Gabriel has a 
spaceship with a transcendent dog. But because an angel is still a creative thing, right? Yes, creative. And yes. so how would he have a relationship with something that's other than creative? So, so, so this is why Islam is very important. In Islam, God Almighty wants us the creation yeah. or respect. Look at this man. Do you know how big the universe is? Humongous. We're a speck of dust. And God wants a relationship with you and me and all of us. He shows what? Look how divine and how mighty he is. He wants a relationship with you. And now when we talk about the angels, we say that God Almighty can choose to communicate. We don't have an issue with communication. Our issue is when you get that divine being and say he became that little speck of a human being that's an ignorant who relies on food and goes to the toilet. We say this is blasphemy against God. And so, okay, so you would say he communicated, yeah. the transcendent God communicated yeah. his revelation through words, through yes. words. Okay. Okay. We believe God's, Allah speaks. Okay, so you believe, okay, that's yes, interesting. Yes, 100%. Okay, we that, believe he speaks. We, these are things, attributes that belong to him because for, for us, we believe he spoke. Yeah. Just like he spoke to Moses and Jesus, he, yeah. he speaks. Now, is the speaking, we do not, this is where, yeah. remember I told you the third category is attribution, attributes. Yeah. We do not, I do not say my speech is like God's speech. Because I require a tongue, a mouth, yeah. breathing, and many other elements to talk. Yeah. So God is the perfect of examples. Yeah. That's why we don't say, oh, he spoke, oh, does that mean he has a tongue? No. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And so I'm, I'm still kind of confused about how a, let's say, a, uh, a word from a transcendent being, yeah. right, could still be communicated to creation. Creative thing. Like, I mean, how does that okay. how does that barrier get crossed? Okay, Can you see okay, 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 good question, Alex. I would say the following: yeah. If our Christian brothers and sisters have yeah. no problem, with God Almighty created heavens and the earth, yeah. becomes a man and eats food. Why do they have a problem that God communicated well, to an a, a, a angel? Yeah. So why does that become a big problem? I think Christianity really specified that there is a problem about how how the transcendent God with his great creation. And I think they really understood that this is an issue and it's, a, it's not just a theological but it's also a philosophical. Right? How can a God that has attributes such as transcendence, so on, so on, so on, be able to have a relationship with his creation? And so I think from, from the Christian tradition they're trying to understand that through, through his word but in a divine person, right? Through the Logos, right? And they're trying to communicate that relationship by him assuming human nature. Why, why though? Look, for example, yeah. we yeah. say, for God Almighty, we can say all things are possible. Yeah. All yeah. things. A yeah. thing is something. If I come and say to you, can you, the square has how many sides? It has four sides. How many sides does a triangle have? Three sides. If I say to you, is it possible for God to make a triangle square? Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, this is it's not, it's not a thing. It's not, it's, when we say God can do anything, it's not a thing. The square has four sides. So when come, people come and say, Jesus is fully God and fully man, I'm like, what do you mean by that? Because it's, it goes against God's nature. That's the reason why when I asked you, can God lie? You said no. Yeah. The point is what? We say God Almighty has these powers. It goes against his attribute. But are, they, him, are they specific to his nature? Yes, they're specific to his nature. So transcendence would be something that's specific to his nature. Now, of course. What's so, your definition of that? Is that so? Definition of transcendence. Uh, I'd say, yeah. I'm just trying to finish this. We'll be soon, soon. So what we're saying is, there is no problem with God Almighty communicating. Now, can that communication be done through angels, whatever? But the point is the following. The crux of the matter is what? That we worship God alone. God on the day of judgment, Satan, our biggest enemy. Yeah. He doesn't care if you drink alcohol. He doesn't care if you have sex before marriage. He doesn't care if you commit murder. The one thing that it will be a knockout blow is what? If you stand in front of God and you associate with partners to if you stand in front of God and God says, I gave you life, I gave you death, I gave you health, I gave you wealth, I gave you everything. Yeah. And you did what? Worship Jesus, the creation that I sent. And Jesus used to praise me. That is something that God will never forget. It's funny because like a lot of the heresies towards Christianity or that. Yeah, they used to burn them here, tied by tied by the corner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's interesting because you know, they would associate that with something like Arianism. Right? Which is like the uh, Jesus Christ is a creative being, right? And they would say that, oh, well, he's actually a creative creature second to God the Father, right? And you know, a lot of other philosophers and you know, Neoplatonism and all that kind of stuff had these sorts of understandings, right? And so I think. Put that aside. There's, for me, there is still that issue, just like on a frank level, 
of that relationship between the, the creator and the creator, right? And I understand that for you, all gods, well, for God, for you, uh, his nature and his attributes are his, his nature. His nature communicates his attributes, right? And that's important. But to me, it seems like a violation of his nature to have a relationship with the creator. Right? Because if his part of his nature is to be transcendent, can you can you see like it's a logical, it's a logical issue. But how do you reconcile? I wouldn't. I just, I just want to say sorry, sorry. Like I wouldn't want to let's say defy God's nature and say like and say there's a logical contradiction within his nature. Like, to say that he could do something beyond his nature. Like, to me, that seems problematic. As much as saying, "Oh well, he came as a creative person," right? Because it goes against his nature. Which one's more far-fetched against his nature? God Almighty communicating with the creation, yeah. or God Almighty becoming the creation? So I mean, I would say. I, I don't know. I wouldn't say That's it's a spectrum. Bad. I guess it's a spectrum. That's What's more far fetched? So far fetched. Think about or, it. Him becoming yeah. creation, yeah. weak, ignorant, or him communicating with the creation? Which one goes against yeah. his nature? I mean, both do. But and how does the first one do? Him communicating with his creation is very possible. But him to strip himself of his attributes and become something that is not is an absolute no god. It's imposing it on his very self. Like I said, in the culture. They wouldn't believe that they wouldn't argue that. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think I gotta go now. I can tell you about this. Yeah, he's just going on and on and